right? So remember, if if Nostra Aetate had restricted it to uh, Muslims have a knowledge of the person of, of God via Abraham or something like that, maybe they could skate around that. But the problem is that they say that they adore the one true God and have the faith of Abraham. No, they don't. You see, that's that's the problem there. So are they talking about a different Jesus or what? Yeah, that's my point, right? So again, if I, if I, if I say Jesus, I believe, like Job's Witnesses, they quote, believe in Jesus. Mormons believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. Do me, a Job's Witness, and a Mormon, therefore all have the same referent? Kinda, because even though they might intend, quote, Jesus, it's totally wrong. And so the reference doesn't achieve the worship and adoration as Vatican II says, you see. So knowing, it's it's equivocating on the word knowing is what I'm trying to say. Oh, I forgot to talk about Acts 17. This is a great example of this. So let's go to Acts 17 where, <clears throat> where uh, Trent, uh, he, he brought this up today, Acts 17. So let's look at this. <clears throat> Because again, we're going to see that Acts 17 doesn't say what Trent wants it to say. It says the exact opposite of it. And this is relevant because here's where, and Dan, I apologize, we'll go to you in just a second. Uh, this is where the the apologetic of St. Paul confronts the, uh, the Greek philosophers. So Paul walks into Athens to the marketplace and he says that there were certain uh, Epicurean and Stoic philosophers. And uh, he reasoned with the Jews and the Gentiles the worshipers in the synagogue. By the way, that means he's debating, so debating's not wrong. The Stoic philosophers and Epicureans say, what is this babbler talking about? Everyone and typed that when he's made the official hamburger of March Madness, a buck. Yeah! What the heck? Where's this coming from? On another level. Oh, that's the stupid ad on the Bible Gateway page. I'm like, what the heck is black people talking about food in my mind? Am, am I going crazy? I got altars talking to me. Uh... They brought him to the Areopagus. What is this doctrine? So we'll skip down here to where Paul addresses the Areopagus. And Paul says, uh, I was passing through your objects of worship, and I noticed that you had a bunch of statues and all kinds of things. And I even found an altar that says, to the unknown God. Now, in my mind, this example is a perfect example of the point that I've been making, my position. Okay, Trent, I don't know why he thought this proved his position, but... Therefore, the one God who you worship without knowing. Okay, so notice that there's two senses of knowing here. And worship here does not mean that the worship is accepted. And the problem with the Vatican II passage is the wording makes it sound as if it is accepted. Muslims worship the one God, you say. Because of what? Because of, quote, the faith of Abraham? But it's not the faith of Abraham. Because the faith of Abraham is not based on genetic descent, as Paul says. It's based on belief in the Messiah, which neither Jews nor Muslims have. So the entire letter of the Galatians refutes this idea that there's some faith of Abraham separate from the faith of Christ. No, there's not. And you can't have one without the other. Okay? So let's go back to Acts 17. <clears throat> That's the, the one that I proclaim to you. Now, if they already knew God, then Paul doesn't need to, what, what message does he need to bring? If they already know God in a potentially saving relationship via their altar, which actually reads unknown God. Okay, what does this say right here? Unknown God. We are worshiping what we don't know. So that means that they're not really worshiping the living God. Otherwise, why does Paul need to bring a message to them if they're already worshiping God? So this is the, Trent's whole point is undercut by the point of the passage. Paul is preaching to people who don't know God in a saving way. And you say, well, then what's the problem with the Muslim text? Because this gives the impression that it is a saving way. They adore the one God. They have the faith of Abraham and submit to Abraham, submit to God like Abraham. No, they don't. That's the point. And the whole move of Trent and company to get to what Nostra Tate, Vatican II says right here in this text, 
is natural theology, misinterpreting passages like this. God who made the world and everything in it, since he's Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with man's hand. Oh, so wait a minute. So he's not actually worshipped according to the ignorant worship of these people. Do you see this? So there's two different senses of knowing and worshipping. This first sense that you worship without knowing, Paul is rhetorically saying you don't actually worship him and he doesn't accept this worship. He's not worshipped with men's hands. Yet you pagans who, quote, worship him unknowingly, do worship him with men's hands, and that is not true worship. He has made from one, since he gives life to everything, he's the creator, he's not a creature. He has made from one every blood, uh, every nation, every blood, every tribe to dwell on the face of the earth. He has predetermined their appointed times and boundaries and dwellings, so that they should seek him in the hope that they might find him, though he's not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. For we, as some of your poets have said, are also his offspring. So Paul is saying that there is a kind of primordial, uh, you could say, quote, monotheism there. But the primordial monotheism is, first of all, not obtained through idolatry. That's his point there. And all the nations became idolatrous, you see. So this passage has nothing to do with Trent's natural theology, Paul is actually saying that you're a bunch of idolaters and you've made the divine nature into something that it's not. And then he says, uh-oh, you were what? Ignorant. Now, wait a minute. If they're ignorant, then how are they worshiping the one true God? So, again, this, I think, really demolishes the opposite reading that Trent tried to give it in his uh, citations today on Twitter. Uh, Dan, did you want to say something? Dan, are you still there? Uh, it says you're here, but I can't hear you. Did you turn your mic on? Are you, are you there? Gospels, the Old Testament. Oh, sorry. No, the Old Testament teaches the Trinity too. Oh. So how is the... So where is this... From the light of the gospel. Where is this Aryan Unitarian God that we all worship then? Where's that coming from? It's not. That's an error of Aryan and his followers. Okay, so it's then, error, so then you don't believe. Sorry, so you, then you don't believe Nostra Aetate's Vatican II document that Muslims and Roman Catholics and Jews all worship the same God. I wouldn't be Catholic if I told you that I don't believe in Nostra Aetate, of course. So yeah. So so well, those two things are mutually exclusive. Um. Well, yeah. If you think that the Catholic has contradicted itself. Yeah, if you come to this conclusion, you can't be Catholic. Well, I'm just saying the very conversation we're having, as you try to express faithfulness to Catholicism and Nostra Aetate, you're immediately confronted with the nonsensical position of trying to say that Arius and the Council of Nicaea are worshiping the same God. Okay, then why do we have a Council of Nicaea? What's the point of that? Why excommunicate uh, Eunomius and Arius? We're all worshiping the same God. Yeah, when you talk to a, have you ever talked to a Jehovah's Witness? Um, yeah, slightly. Do you, do you deeply, does it but... does it appear in the midst of those conversations that you guys have the same theology about God? No, but I think that they actually don't believe in our same God. <laughs> do you? They have the same view as Arius. Okay, maybe no. Yeah, okay. So I then, so then Arius, so Arius and Athanasius don't worship the same God. I just thought that Arius thought that Christ um, came later, but was still like a, one with the same God. Whereas I think Jehovah's Witnesses no. think that they're actually two different gods. No, that they like both that. teach that the uh, the Son of God is the first thing God created. Okay, yeah, that's problematic. I wouldn't say no, it's not problematic. It's that. it's it's a heresy. It's a different religion. Yeah, of course, of course, sure. Okay, so you, the, there's not the same deity being worshipped between uh, a Jehovah's Witness and a person who believes in the Trinity. Two different gods. Of course, of course. Then Nostra Aetate is not true. Because it not says that. That, that Unitarians and Trinitarians all worship the same God. 
but are your witnesses Unitarians? I mean, yes, they are. Yes. But... Okay. okay. All right. I'm not trying to be mean, but um, you get the point. 